Okay, so I have a fresh sheet of paper, or for you, you probably just want to turn the page in your engineer's notebook, and we're going to go ahead and re-sketch this. So I'll just do the basic shape. And it doesn't have to be to scale, just do the best job that you can. That's why we label it. Sixty-five newtons of force there. Um, here, instead of even drawing in the roller, we're just going to put the reaction force down. So, R E Y equals eighty-eight point five newtons of force. Uh, here we have the initial force of one hundred newtons. Same with right here, fifteen newtons of force. Um, at A, we have two reaction forces, R, A, Y. Uh, if you look on the previous, we said 76.5. So, 76.5 newtons of force. And over here, R, A, X was negative 15 newtons. Now, there are many different ways to solve trusses. The way that I'm showing you, I'm going to always keep the arrows in the same direction that I drew them initially, and some of them might end up to be positive, some of them might end up to be negative. I'm going to keep it like that until the very end. All right, we would still want to label our points. So we have A, B, C, D, E. Keep those the same throughout, however you choose them. Um, and so then uh, it would probably also be a good idea to put in our values. And I'm just going to write them here. Just because it's so crowded, I'm not going to put in all of the arrows in between. Okay, so uh, after you have, just to review, we've determined that it is statically determinate. We can keep going. And we have solved for the three external reaction forces. We know what those are now. Okay, so now that we have an updated version uh, of our truss diagram, the next step is twofold. We are going to solve to find the internal forces and at the same time solve to find the angles. Now, some, when they're solving trusses, will find every angle. Um, I am only going to be finding the angles necessary to be solving the entire truss. So I'm going to kind of do both of them at the same time. And what we're going to do is draw free body diagrams. So I'm going to start with a free body diagram. Free body diagram. You want to label your work very well in your engineer's notebook. At A. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take apart this part of the truss at point A. So I'm going to go ahead and put down point A, label it. Um, I have these two reaction forces, RAY equals 76.5, RAX equals negative 15. And then I'm going to draw in these force vectors here. This one's going up towards B, and this one's going over here towards C, and the very last thing I need to find is that angle right there. Okay, So I'm going to redraw this triangle here, and what I'm going to do is draw it with an altitude drop down here at a right angle, like this. Um, and I want to know what this angle is, uh, so I'm going to use some trigonometry. I know that the height right here is 6. That was given, so I can fill that in, 6. And now I just need to know this distance from here to that altitude I dropped down. And actually, that uh, should be pretty easy to figure out. Um, I know that the entire distance is 10. 3 and 7 make 10. Up here, I have 4 and 4 to this point. So from here to here must be 2. Okay, so now I have that. How am I supposed to get the angle? Well, the trigonometric function tangent 
The tangent of an angle is the ratio of the opposite side length to the adjacent side length. Um, and in this case, the tangent of angle A is 6 over 2, or just 3. But we need to know the angle from that. So what we're going to do is the inverse of that tangent. And there's a button on the calculator for this. It's tangent to the negative first of 3. So it's the inverse. It's uh, we're giving the value of the tangent, and the calculator is going to tell us what that angle is. So here in the calculator, I type in second, and then it's right here above tangent, tangent negative 1 of 3 equals 71.565. And I'm going to round to three decimal places just like MD Solids does. So equals 71.565 degrees. And I can go ahead and label that right in here. All right, now I'm ready to get started. And my main goal here with the free body diagram is to figure out what this force is and whether it's tension or compression and what this force is and whether it's tension or compression. And just a general note, if you've never done this before, um, at the end, if we get a positive number, that's going to be a tension force. And we'll label it parentheses T. If we get a negative number, that's going to be a compression force, and I'll label it with a C. Okay, I'm going to use these two formulas. The sum of the forces in the x direction equals zero. And over here, I'll put the sum of the forces in the y direction equals zero. Uh, we do not have that third formula for moments. We don't use moments when we're talking about the internal forces or the free body diagrams. So, x direction. It all equals zero. What do we have going in the x direction? Well, we have the force of AC. We don't know what that is, so we just write force AC. Um, and then we also have RAX. That's negative 15, so minus 15. Now, we made force of AC positive, it's positive force of AC, because it's going to the right. And when we're talking about the x direction, right is positive. Now, it might not appear like we have anything else going to the right, but actually, force of AB is going to the right, it's also going up. So we have to do something special with it. Since it's going to the right, it's plus the force of AB, but to isolate it so that we're only getting the x direction part of it, we're going to multiply it by cosine of this angle, 71.565 degrees. If we were doing the y direction, it would be sine, but uh, we'll get to that. This is cosine. All right, uh, we have two unknowns. We don't know FAC, we don't know FAB, so we have to pause here and come back to this um, since we don't know either one. All right, let's go over here to the sum of the forces in the y direction. In the y direction, uh, the first thing that comes up is RAY, 76.5. It's positive because it's going up. And when we're talking about the y direction, up and down, up is positive. So 0 equals 76.5. Uh, do we have anything else? RAX, no. FAC, no. But FAB is going up also to the right. Um, so we're going to say plus FAB. And it's plus because it's going up. But we only want the vertical portion of it, um, the y part of it. So we're going to multiply this by sine 71.565 degrees. So you kind of have to memorize that when we're talking about the x direction, you're going to use cosine if it doesn't go straight left, right. And when we're talking about the y direction, if it doesn't go straight up and down, it goes at an angle up or down, then you're going to multiply it by the sine of that angle. And we're always going to multiply it by the angle that is uh, adjacent to the x-axis. We're not going to do anything with the y-axis with the angle. All right, this one we can solve. There's only one unknown. I'm going to subtract the 76.5 over, so it's negative. Now it's on the left side. I'll recopy what I have. And then I need to divide both sides by the sine of 71.565 degrees. And now I have that all there. FAB is alone, so I'm going to get my first uh, real answer here. Negative 76.5 divided by sine 
and I get negative 80.64. I'm just going to round to two places just like MD Solids does. So negative 80.64 newtons of force and since that's negative this is a compression force. So I'm going to go ahead right there and write parentheses C and that is one of my main answers. Remember the main point here what I'm trying to do is figure out what each of these forces are and whether they are tension or compression. So in the end I should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven forces that I need to figure out. This was the first one. I'm going to get another one right away because FAB I can plug in right here and know the value of FAC. So zero equals FAC minus 15 plus FAB is negative 80.64 times cosine 71.565. All right, um, so let's figure out what all of that is. Zero equals FAC. I'm going to go ahead and type the rest of this right away into my calculator. Negative 15 minus 80.64 times cosine 71.565, and I get negative 40.5. If I move that over to the other side, it's positive 40.5. So that's 40.5 newtons of force, and since that's positive, that's tension. All right, so I know two of my values, and now to go on to our free body diagram in the, uh, with respect to E.